Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe before you go any further and realize that this content is absolute fucking garbage. If this is not your first time here, welcome back. You may want to get your head checked out a little bit. But I digress. You're not here to listen to me waffle on too much. Today we are here for a Burning Abyss deck profile. As many of you will know, if you are accustomed to the channel, Burning Abyss is definitely, I'd say, my top three favourite decks of all time. My favourite spot going to Light Sworn. And as such, pretty much every single format, I'll make some attempt at playing with the deck a little bit or trying out a few different variations just to see what sticks well for me. For today's build, I'm doing something a little bit more simplistic. The aim here is just to do what Burning Abyss does best. We haven't got an absolute ton of extenders. We're relying on the Burning Abyss cards themselves. We're running a pretty heavy trap lineup and not much else. There are a few good notes for this build. The fact that it is very budget friendly for those of you who'd like to try it out. It's a really good way to learn how to be resourceful with the deck as well. And on top of this, it's extremely flexible, which means you can adjust the builds however the fuck you like for yourself. Before we go any further, if you are looking to pick up singles after this, you should check out the channel sponsors over at Jam Jam Cards UK. They don't just have Yu-Gi-Oh cards, they have Pokemon singles too. And if you want to net yourself a cheeky discount, use my link in the description. But again, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So let me first apologise before we go any further if there are any weird noises in the background. Hopefully there won't be uh, just my dog being an asshole or maybe the horse is next door, but that should all be okay. And if you do hear a loud noise, kind of a whirring sound, that is my laptop fans going like the clappers. Uh, kind of annoying, but there you go. So just to reiterate before we go on, the intention with today's deck profile is to do something a little bit differently. I didn't want to go into all these hybrid builds that we see out there. I wanted to just sort of keep this as a plain old BA and just have a little bit of fun with it. So nothing too serious here, nothing too insanely competitive. But if you're looking to learn a deck, this might be a really good way of doing so. Because it'll give you an idea of how all the cards interact and work with each other. So we start off with triple copies of Graph, triple copies of Seer. Uh, these two have both come off the list entirely. Though I don't see any real reason not to play them. At uh, three, I guess see you could maybe cut down a little bit if you really wanted to. But honestly, I think three of each is just really, really cool to have some fun with. I mean, why not fucking do it, hey? We have three copies of Skyrim. You just got to remember to search in the end phase. This is, again, pretty much just like maxing out our names and giving ourselves as many opportunities to summon as many of these as possible. And of course, this will set you up for the following turns. We play just a single copy of Barbar, just the one is absolutely fine. Uh, Burn doesn't come into the game too much these days. You could poss possibly even slide this if you wanted to. Um, but in truth, this is basically there just as an additional name. There are some other BAs you could play if you just wanted extra names and extenders, so you can keep resolving those special summon effects. But honestly, I think just the one Barbar is absolutely fine. We have a single copy of Cal Cab again, another one that just doesn't come up all that often, so we're just playing the one copy, I think just as an additional name, and it does have a little bit of utility, so we can use that toolbox-like effect, but honestly, it's not coming up too often, so one is absolutely more than enough. I settled on two copies of Libic here. I did potentially look at messing around with between one and three as well. Uh, one just definitely didn't feel like enough. It just felt like an additional name at that stage. And the effect to pull stuff out of your hand does come up quite often, actually. So I think two copies of this works really well. Again, you don't want to clog in it like any of the other BAs. The other ones that we're running at three, though, you have the maximum utility out of, so are worth that risk of bricking on. Uh, but I don't feel like Libic is one of those cards. We have two copies of Alec, which is pretty cool for being able to target and negate effects. The downside to this is the fact that it targets. And in the modern game, there's a lot of stuff that stops that. So you don't get quite as much utility out of this as you did before. But it does come up occasionally. Uh, and I think the two copies, again, is really nice for this card. And we round off our actual BA cards here with Farfa. Triple copies of that. Of course, being able to banish a card is really, really nice. The downside, again, is that it targets, but it is a really, really strong bit of equipment to have access to in this deck. Again, it's mostly there just as an additional name, but in terms of utility, it's certainly one of the better options that you could pick. We also have triple copies of Torguard from the Underworld. This is pretty much to be expected here. Uh, I think it's your best starter card really in this deck. Uh, of course, just that normal summon and getting into the rest of your plays from there. If this resolves, you're in a good place, although it's very, very likely to be getting hit by hand traps. 
And then our honorary Burning Abyss card here, Fiendish Rhino Warrior. We've got just the two copies in here. I wanted to try and keep this trim and tight. And going up to the three, I just didn't feel was necessary. Two is absolutely fine. Again, this is just mostly there for thinning out your deck, but also the fact that it can help you keep BAs on board so you can link climb a little bit easier. That effect, of course, of preventing them from popping themselves does come up an awful lot. Then we move on to our hand traps. We have triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Uh, definitely the most diverse of the hand traps. It certainly hits almost every single deck in at least some capacity. Of course, it depends on what the deck is that you're playing against as to whether that's very useful or not, but it's certainly the best option that you've got out there. And then we've got triple copies of Ghost Bell, particularly strong at the moment in this format. Again, you could run some other options in here. This is a little bit of a flex spot, but I really favor Ghost Bell at the moment for the meta matchups. We have triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. It's an incredibly strong card, and the fact that you'll be able to trigger your BA effects off of it is just awesome as well. In keeping with the fact that this is effectively a pure BA deck profile, we're running triple copies of Fire Lake. I've also got two copies of Trap Trick here to be able to shoot that out as well, and then triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. Uh, Trap Trick being able to search either of these and get them onto your field is really good. Fire Lake just gets you a bunch of chains going off, and of course popping cards, which is always really, really nice, especially if you end up going first, a really good way to disrupt the opponent. And then again, as mentioned, two copies of Trap Trick again because I wanted to keep this build trim. Uh, you could omit these for something else if you really wanted to. And then triple copies of Infinite Impermanence to make up our final hand trap and our final set of traps. I really wanted to find some space in here for Imperial Order because we're running such few spell cards, but unfortunately I didn't want something that would just sit on the field and prevent me from being able to special some of my BAs from hand. I felt like that there was too much of a negative impact in terms of what the deck is trying to do, although you could consider running it if that is something you're looking to do. We then move on to the extra deck. We are omitting the side deck as always with these things because it really depends on what kind of format you're playing in, uh, what kind of level of game you're playing at. If you're playing uh, just a little bit online, then that's absolutely fine. If you're playing at your locals, you want to build to what you're playing against there. And of course, when actual events are back, if you're playing at those, you'll want to tweak for that. So we haven't included a side deck here. There are plenty of options though that you could consider. Uh, it's a really flexible deck in terms of what you can add to the side. So starting off with a single copy of Great Dante, uh, again if your opponent is stupid enough to out your Beatrice, normally they are not, so a lot of the time you're not going to actually end up summoning this, but we do have the space for it in here, and it does feel nice when you actually get him out onto the field. A really powerful card once he's there, really stubborn for your opponent to have to deal with, but again, he doesn't come out all that often. Just a single sad lonely copy of Beatrice, unfortunately still at one, hopefully Konami will let it off the list pretty soon um but one is the maximum we can run so that is exactly what we're running this is one of your best bits of interruption on your opponent's turn and it's super easy to tutor out in this deck of course we then have triple copies of Dante. Again, you could run this down at two if you wanted to create some space in the extra deck. I felt that being pure BA though, it would be really, really cool to max out on these. But again, you can look at some other alternatives if you wanted to just run the couple of copies of these. We've got Gossip Shadow in here. This was a bit of a flex spot. There were a few different options I was looking at. Stuff like Grand Pulse and things like that. But honestly, I felt like Gossip Shadow is a really cool addition. Especially for the fact that it can be paired with Zeus to get him a whole bunch of extra materials on as well. Of course, he's also really easy to make given that the deck is like 99% level 3s anyway, so he's super, super easy to get out there, and of course with as many materials as possible. And as recently alluded to, we have Zeus here. This is just an incredibly strong card. If you don't have access to this, there are a hell of a lot of other utility options you can look at. But again, if you can put this in, absolutely do so. Just a single copy of Cherubini. This again could easily be upped. You could potentially take out like a Dante for another one of these if you really wanted to. This is one of the kind of cards that you're going to go into in setting up your first turn boards. So a really good option to consider. We have just a single copy of IP Masquerina. This is for when you go first. Of course, setting up that ability to interrupt your opponent during their turn is a really nice thing to be able to do. We've got our utility cards here, Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Unicorn. These, of course, are for going off in your opponent's turn, removing back rows, spinning cards, all of that good stuff. Topologic Zeroboros is a really good option as well. Some decks are really, really susceptible to having their stuff banished and can really, really fucking hurt them. And this is a good option to look into if you come up against one of those decks. Being able to link into it in your opponent's turn as well with IP Mascarena is a really cool thing to be able to do. A single copy of Appalooza because it's the most generic negate basically in this extra deck here. Just a really, really good option to have to be able to go into. Of course, stops the likes of Nibiru if you can make it quickly. Um, you're not going to make it too often, but when you do, it's a really nice touch. 
We're running Mega Collapse here. A lot of decks really struggle to deal with this. Some of them just can't deal with it at all. And of course, we are running enough Exceeds to kind of justify having this in here as a possible option. But again, a bit of a flex spot if you wanted to try something else. And then our final option here is Access Code Talker. It is just basically power crept Boral Sword. You'd use Boral Sword if you don't have access to this in the first place. But again, being able to pop cards, deal massive damage, and really easy to make in the deck. What is not to love about this card? And that is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully this has helped you in some way, shape or form. It's definitely not perfect, but something you can use to build on going forward. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you've at least enjoyed the content enough to have hit subscribe, or at least hated it enough so that you couldn't look away. In either case, hit that red button and a notification bell if you don't want to miss out on good content in future. If there's something you would like to see on the channel, definitely reach out and let me know. I'm easy enough to find on social media, and I do read all the comments as well. So if there's anything that you'd like to see, definitely let me know down there as well. Thank you very much again for coming along. That is all from me today. I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.